Welcome to the Common Man Football Show. My name is James Coburn, and today's episode, uh, we're talking about NFL draft bust analytics. Uh, we will look at players that were drafted in the past who didn't really live up to expectations or completely ended up out of the NFL, um, and look at them on uh, based on data and based on analytics to give some sort of insight as to why they didn't live up to expectations uh, based on overall data. Uh, so if you're new to the channel and new to the work that I do, all terms and definitions will be in the description. With all that stuff out of the way, let's get to the player in question today, which is Ryan Matthews, uh, running back out of Fresno State. Uh, when you look at Ryan Matthews' production data, it was pretty decent. Uh, he had an 83.32 uh, market share production score. Didn't quite hit all pro career, uh, the all pro career threshold, but definitely was above the five-time Pro Bowl threshold and the three-time Pro Bowl threshold. And when you look at the averages at the position, he's definitely not really near the all-pro career average, but definitely uh, near the Pro Bowl career average and starter career average uh, when it comes to his overall data. And on top of that, when you look at his athleticism traits, pretty decent. 66.30 in terms of explosiveness, 94.47 in terms of speed, and 72.56 in terms of flexibility for his size. When it comes to the running back position, uh, you want running backs that have at least one 179 or higher athleticism trait. Uh, and when it comes to Ryan Matthews, he had one in terms of his speed score of 94.47 out of 100. So the question is, why did Ryan Matthews not live up to his expectations? And the biggest thing about Ryan Matthews as to why he may not have lived up to his expectations is strength of schedule. Um, and this is something that I don't talk a ton about on this channel unless it's relevant in many ways. Um, which is the, the, the sort of thing you have to realize is that guys that play at lower level competition typically perform better in terms of production. And in many ways, the players that translate at lower level competition, whether it's the FCS level, uh, the Division II level, Division III level, or even like the Mountain West Conference, and many times for them to translate to the NFL level, they need to perform even more than what most players do at the SEC level or the Big Ten level, so on and so forth. And... This is strength of schedule adjusted production uh, score. Um, all at all pro running backs since 1969 had at least a 70 or higher strength of schedule adjusted production score, which basically takes the production and adds in the, the layer of strength of schedule to give you sort of, you know, this is their production plus their strength of schedule. The Pro Bowl, all multiple Pro Bowl running backs had at least a 59 or higher, and long term starters were 51 or higher. Uh, when it comes to their strength of schedule adjusted production. And Ryan Matthews only had a 54.96 out of 100, which goes to show that even though he had a pretty solid production score overall when you look at it um, in a vacuum, you know, like 83 is pretty decent when you look at it compared to the, the you know, the, the five-time Pro Bowl threshold and the three-time Pro Bowl threshold. But when you think about the fact that Ryan Matthews mostly did this production at, in Fresno State, against a schedule that was fairly weaker than a guy playing at the Big Ten. So in many ways, if Ryan Matthews had put up the production that he did at a SEC program, at a Big Ten program, he probably wouldn't have had as many of the problems he had in terms of his overall strength of schedule, uh, you know, uh, production data. But um, I think the bottom line is when it comes to Ryan Matthews is, um, and this guy isn't necessarily a bust per se, but he didn't really live up to the expectations that he had. And I think in many ways, the reason why uh, he didn't is because of the fact that he did have good production, but he didn't have just elite production from the place that he was coming from. So again, um, again, this is not something that I bring up a ton, except when it's relevant uh, for a prospect. So this is this would be more relevant with like a guy like Corey Davis, for example, who was in a previous draft class, uh, or uh, Rashad Penny, for example. You know, played at San Diego State. Um, is that when you're talking about taking a running back from a lower level competition, you want them to kind of outperform um, even higher than what you would expect a regular person to perform because of the, the schedule being weaker, because of the defense is typically being weaker, um, so on and so forth. So um, I think in many ways, Ryan Matthews definitely had a good profile. He definitely ended up becoming a long-term starter in many ways, you know, uh, uh, definitely an NFL running back, um, had good athleticism traits. But ultimately, the reason why he didn't live up to the expectation of being a multiple Pro Bowl type um, or a five-time Pro Bowl type in many ways is I think it, it's because of um, the strength of schedule that he faced.
was that he he um, there was stuff on date there was stuff on paper that kind of um, questioned his ability to become a Pro Bowl player because he wasn't really outperforming where he wasn't performing where he needed to perform uh, for his level of competition in many ways. With all that stuff out of the way, of course, my name is James Coburn. You can find my other work at draftcoburn.wordpress.com. You can also follow me on Twitter at Gemetrics. And if you like this content and you want more content like this, be sure to leave a like and subscribe. Share this video as well with anybody that you know. Hit that notification button so you're always reminded when another video of mine drops. And I'll talk to you guys in the next video. Peace.